Welcome to day 11 of the advent of code 2022 in Rust. So today the monkeys have stolen some of our things and they're throwing them around and we're keeping track of how worried we are about each item as they look at it and throw it to another monkey. So our input looks like this. We get some items and we're told how worried we are about each item being inspected and thrown. Then there's a, an operation to be done on how worried we are. So depending on which monkey we're looking at depends on how worried we are. And then we divide out the worry after it's been calculated and check if it's divisible by the number we're given for each monkey. If that test passes, we're told which monkey to throw it to. If it fails, we throw it to another monkey. So that's our input. Let's get into it. I'm going to gloss over the parsing today because we've spent a lot of time on that in the last 10 days. And this one's actually fairly easy to parse, although it requires a bit of code. So if we have a look at the input format, each monkey takes six lines. We can ignore the first line. We know what monkey index it is because we're passing the file top to bottom. Then we can extract out a list of priorities. We can extract out the operator, which is either multiply or add. We can extract out the amount in the operation, which is either a number or one sneaky case where it asks us to fetch out the old priority and multiply it by itself. And then we can check what the, uh, the test value is and we can work out what monkey to throw to next. And those are already given as zero through seven. So they're already an index into an array. So the format makes this nice and easy. So there's just a couple of things we have to be careful about. The first is the operator. So here we're doing a parse on the operator, trying to parse it as a number. If that succeeds, we'll map it into an option rather than a result. If it fails and it's not a number, so i.e. the value old as text, we map it to none. So we know by looking at the amount, it's either present and we multiply or add, or it's missing and we just square the previous priority. The other thing is the numbers. We've worked with i32s, u32s most of the way through the advent of code. The numbers here grow pretty big, so we've got to be careful we have enough space for them. So we're using 64-bit numbers here. All right, so let's get to actually coding the solution. The problem is asking us to do 20 rounds of passes between all monkeys. So let's run through 20 times. And then we want to run through each monkey every round. And then we want to work through each of the monkey's items, but we want to account for the case that the monkey might not have any. So let's do a condition that can cope with that. Get the current monkey number, unwrap that, check its items, ensure the length is greater than zero. And then we can get our monkey as mutable because we want to change its state. Get mutable on current monkey, unwrap. Then we can increment the number of inspections this monkey's done because we're considering one item each loop here. So we can do monkey.inspections plus equals one. Then we can grab the first item out of their list, monkey items, pop front, and unwrap that item. So I'm referring to it as item here. It's really a priority for an item, but it makes sense to consider them as items. So then we'll call monkey.calc on that item. And that should give us back a throw to for the next monkey that should go to and a new priority. And then we can add that item to the monkey that it's going to. Monkeys dot get mutt on the throw to monkey. Unwrap that, get its items and push to the back of their list, the new priority. And then we should have a quick look at what the calc function does. So this is saying if the op amount is sum, then we parse the number successfully. So that's the case where we've got a number to operate on. And the else case is where we've got a, a bit of text and we know that's going to be old. So we'll just make that assumption there. So either get the value or use the current priority. Then we calculate the new priority using the operator that we've been given, either multiply or add. Divide by three because the problem tells us to and it stops the numbers getting too big. Floor that. So go to the nearest whole number that's lower than the value we get. Convert that back to an integer and then check if the value is divisible by our test. So this van number here, so test divisible by two, 13, and so on. If it is, we use the true target to send the new priority. Otherwise we send it to the false target. So two different monkeys we can select. So that gives us our rounds. That's moving all the items between monkeys and updating the priority values. Finally, we want to find the monkeys who've done the most throws or the most inspections. So we find the top two and multiply their number of inspections together to get a monkey business number. So monkeys, we'll sort it and we'll take monkey one, monkey two. 
and we'll do monkey one dot inspections compare with a reference to monkey two dot inspections so that's been sorted in place then we can take our monkeys iterate through them we can map to just get the inspections out then we can reverse that because we want to take it not in ascending order but descending order to get the top two take the first two elements out and collect and that will be our top two we'll tell it what type that should have which is vec of u size and then finally we can print out our result which will be top two get the first element unwrap it multiply by top two get looks like there's a mistake there that should be top two get the first element out and unwrap and the same there that should be top two and that should be top two there and then we have to dereference these because these will be references to i32s not to or to u sizes even there we go let's run that and see what it gives us what do we get my answer is coming out as 120,384 so is that right and it is fantastic so on to part two then okay so part two part two is hard there's a trick to it that makes it incredibly simple we actually need to do very little work but working out what the solution is really hard so we're being told we can no longer divide by three which is what we did in the first part to make the numbers stay smaller it's kind of arbitrary it doesn't really matter just it was an arbitrary oper operation to make the numbers stay smaller so now we're being told we can't do that we have to find another way of doing this and rather than running a small number of rounds 20 we're running 10,000 rounds so anything you try like taking 128 bit numbers and trying to use those as a solution to get around the numbers getting big won't work because of the multiplication they get far bigger than that really quickly and similarly if you go off and get a big number package that can represent arbitrarily large numbers maybe that'll work but it'll take a very long time to run and there's no need to we can do something much simpler so we're effectively being asked for the same calculations before just far more rounds so I've tried to come up with an intuitive way of explaining this let's have a look so we're given a hint but by no means a solution here so each of the divisors for our tests for which monkey to throw it to is a prime number so 3 5 2 13 and so on so that should get us thinking about primes and factorization and what we need to retain here certainly not the answer but let's discuss what a prime factorization is so if we take a number like 99 the prime factorization of a number is finding prime numbers that multiply together to make your number so for 99 that will be 3 times 3 times 11 so 3 times 3 is 9 9 times 11 is, 11 is 99 so the prime factorization is more what we want to be thinking about here so if we slim this down to a really simple example where our divisor tests are 2 and 3 so the number in these tests that decide what monkey to throw to are 2 and 3 the product of those is 6 and then say we had a single item with a worry value of 5 how worried we are about it being dropped and an operation of 4 so the operation being what happens when that monkey inspects the item what happens to the worry value so applying those numbers the starting worry value of 5 adding 4 to it that becomes 9 and then here is the trick so we can check what is 9 modulo 6 so that gives us back 3 and that has retained the information about whether our number was divisible by 2 and 3 and this is the bit that's slightly tricky to get your head around so if we take 9 for example it's divisible by 3 after being checked modulo 6 it's still divisible by 3 9 was never divisible by 2 and after being checked modulo 6 it's still not divisible by 2 so we're retaining the information about is it divisible by each number but we're throwing away the size of the number and this can kind of be thought of a bit intuitively although not really so this is kind of some fudgy hand waving that will hopefully get hopefully get you thinking the right way about this and then i've got a slightly better explanation so if we take nine and break it down into its prime factorization so three times three times three makes our nine multiplying two times three that gives us six adding on three that gives us our nine back so we can break this operation down into okay one lot of our two times three which is our six so we can throw that away we don't need it and then that leaves us with three left over so you can think about 
every time we take a number, we check against this product, we're throwing away the part of that number that is containing effectively duplicates of our twos and threes. So looking at this, we've got a two and a three, we can throw that away and still retain the three. And then the same in this next example. So we're saying start with five, add three, that becomes eight. Factor out by six, we get two back. Eight was originally divisible by two. Two is still divisible by two. Neither of them were ever divisible by three. So again, we kind of get the situation where we can say, okay, well, three lots of two, we're throwing away a six and we're adding two, that gives us our eight back. So the other way to think about this is if you're working with just a single modulus value, say working modulus seven, every time you add one to a number, you get closer and closer and closer to being able to throw away another value and reset to zero. So add one to seven, modulo it becomes one, add two to the one, it becomes three, modulo seven, it stays three, you keep adding on enough, you'll eventually get back to zero. So what we're doing here effectively is saying, when we reach a point that we've had, that we've included one multiple of each of our divisors, we can then loop around and throw away everything we've just done and only keep the amount that's over that. So we're effectively doing lots of modulus at the same time. That's the best way to think about this is that we're retaining this information about whether we're divisible by our set of divisors and we're throwing away any information we don't need, just how close are we to getting to the next time that we're divisible by one of these. So with that in mind, let's jump in and update the code. Okay, so I've made a quick start by extracting the load monkeys work into a function and reloaded it so we don't start with the state messed up by the first part of the problem. Then let's copy the first part of the problem so we can modify it. And here we want to run up to 10,000 rather than 20. And then we need to modify how we calculate our new priority. So the first thing we need to know is what all of our divisor values were. So let's figure that out first. So we can take our monkeys, we can iterate through them, we can map each monkey to get monkey test val. Then we can fold, which is like a reduce on one u64. That'll tell it what type we want to work with. And then we'll take a and b, and then for each value, we'll just multiply them together. So all this is doing is taking all the divisors and creating a product of them. Now, technically we ought to check here that we've actually got a least multiple, a least common multiple, but we can inspect the file and see they're all unique. So let's not add that complication. So then that's our uh, value to reduce by. Let's just call it common divisors, common divs. There we go. And then the calc method needs to change. So for now I'm just gonna copy paste it. I will tidy this up before I check it in. So we will take a new parameter that tells us what to divide by. Common divs again, that'll be a u64. And then here, all we have to do is modulo by that. And we no longer need the bracket, that was for the cast. Okay, and we'll call that calc2 so it doesn't clash. And actually let's take that as a reference so that we don't worry about moving. And then we can update our call inside this loop to say calc2 and we'll pass a reference to the common divisors. Okay, let's give that a run and just check it works first. All right, what does that give us? Okay, so 32,005,98, huge number. So that's not that useful. Let's run it again against the test input so that we can check whether the output is right because I've got no idea if that's even close to right. So against the test input we get 27, 133, 101, 58, and that is what we get on the problem. So that's the solution that we're given for the test input. So it looks like we're right. It still feels like we could understand this a bit better. So I'm gonna add some extra printing to this so we can see what's happening as this runs. Okay, so I've made several changes. I've gone back to the test input because that's a little bit simpler, there's fewer monkeys. So what we need to remember is that our divisor numbers are 23, 19, 13, and 17. So kind of the teen primes and 23. So keep that in mind. And then over in the code, I've reduced this down to 20 iterations again for the second part. There's no need to print out more than that. We can see what we need without that. And then inside the calc function, I've added some printing, which prints out the prime factors of our number before and after modulo on the divisor. 
and also printing out the number itself before and after being moduloed against our least common multiple. So let's see what that looks like in the terminal. So we'll run it. And we can see that some of these aren't changing. So we need to scroll back and find one that does change. So here's one that changes. So we've got 116,000 going down to 20,000. What's important is if we look at its common multiples, or its, its uh, prime factorization even, which is these two arrays here, the threes and the twos are changing. And this massive 12,000 is becoming a 797. What's been retained though is the 19. So that was one of our key numbers that we needed to keep around, and that's been maintained. That's in both sets. It's still divisible by 19 afterwards. And then a lot of the time we can see this doesn't change. It'd be great to see one that has a 17 or a 13 in it. There we go, there's one with 23. So it was initially containing these numbers. So 2, 2, 19, 19, 23, 23, 41, 41. So a bunch of primes. Now the 41s go away, the 2s go away, but that's fine because we're keeping the 19 and the 23. So you can see this is working and I do not blame you if this is hard to understand. It took me a really long time to get my head around this. Um, hours, not a few minutes. I don't know how the people who solved this in a few minutes did it, but this is the solution. It's a really slick solution once you understand it, but it definitely takes some time to get your head around. So best of luck, comment if I can help you further, and I will see you tomorrow for the next problem.